Good, Good evening and welcome to tonight's school board meeting. It's Monday, August 12, 2019, 6 o'clock. We're in the Susan Tully Lively Boardroom at the 1887 building. If you call the meeting to order, ask Mr. Kevlar to call roll, please. Mrs. Fisher? Here. Mr. Gayhart? Here. Mrs. Ingersoll? Here. Mr. Martell? Here. Mr. O'Donnell? Here. Mrs. Ray? Here. Mr. Scarrow? Here. We do have a quorum. We will continue. I will note that this meeting has been noticed for state statutes. Um, judging by the audience, I would say we don't have any community participation. Yes, we do. Otherwise, we'll dispense with reading that and go to the high school baseball team overnight travel request. All right, thank you. My name is Chad Henslow, and I'm the uh, head baseball coach. Oh, there you go. You scared me for a minute. <laughs> um, and just to, to lead it off, so this was our third year of going to Myrtle Beach for spring training and playing some games down there. This year we played five games. Um, in the past we've played four. It's been a great trip. I guess one thing I would say, and, and you know, kind of this picture is, is Elkhorn travels very well. You know, and this is kind of an example of how many, not only players, but parents and grandparents and siblings we get. And uh, it's pretty amazing. The other thing is our... Our student athletes that you're going to hear from, um, they're always on time. We've never had a problem. They're, uh, we've never had to discipline or even talk to anybody about any behavior down there. They represent very well. So I guess to start, we just want to thank you for allowing us to go and allowing to take this trip and continue to take it. Uh, we think it's pretty valuable. Can I do the... Uh, can I give another clicker try? I know my first time ever. No. Yeah. I ruined it first time ever. All right. So, um, so just a couple of pictures from last year's. Um, or, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid now. Just don't right click. The first time was a train wreck. Right? No so, pressure now. <laughs> um, just a couple of pictures from the trip. Uh, we have, we have the opportunity. All the hotels for the teams involved in the spring training are on the beach. So the kids get to take advantage of that, um, spend a lot of time together, uh, a lot of games, a lot of practice, but also a lot of, uh, we do journaling on the way down and goal setting and kind of projections of, you know, what do you want to be, who you want to be, how you're going to get there, how you're going to make that happen for you. And not all of them have to do with baseball. In fact, the first year, um, it was a good thing, but I kind of kicked myself on the way back. We meet with all players then after we've journaled on the way down and one-on-one -on -one with each one for about a half an hour. And the one player said, well, I don't think I'm going to play. And he was a senior. And I'm like, why? And he said, well, he asked that one question, like, why do we play and why do we enjoy doing this? And I really couldn't come up with anything. So I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do this. I should spend time doing something else. And I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> but it was... It was interesting that he reflected on, mm -hmm. I don't really like this as much as I did. Why do I play? Do I play just because I'm playing? And, you know, he was a, a 4.0 student and a really smart kid and had a lot of things going. So he spent time doing that. Um, so, yeah. So I just, real quickly, um, a few of the guys wanted to say a few things about the trip before we move on to talking about 2020. So, Austin, you want to start us off? Hi, my name is Austin Bessel. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you for letting me be here. Um, Myrtle Beach trip is very, very helpful. I think based on, so off the games part, um, just sometimes for first games you're a little rusty, and it helps you. It helps you break out of that rust. And so when we come back and we play our uh, conference games right away, we already have that first step out of the way, so we're already ready to go. And you already see these other teams like doing some things that we were doing in Myrtle Beach, and we already got those things out of the way. Uh, plus, the like the team bonding stuff is really helpful. We're away from our parents the whole time, and we're in a whole different building, mm -hmm. and um, we're in rooms with people that we aren't like very close with. So it helps build strong relationships with them and. <clears throat> It helps us like get to know each other very well since we're there for like four nights and we're in the same room pretty much the whole day mm -hmm. other than the games. So yeah. I'm Finn Weber. Um, I've been to Myrtle Beach two times and I remember my first time I was a sophomore and I was roomed with a bunch of seniors. <laughs> but um, 
I I kind of got to know him a little bit more, and then that kind of just coasted into like a very good season. And I think without Myrtle Beach, I wouldn't have got to know those guys, you know, and I would have struggled with like starting off the season better, you know. And I just think that Myrtle Beach is an essential part of every single season. And I going down south and playing in actual good weather when it's not raining all the time, you know, <laughs> it's probably snowing in the spring, but you know, it's it's fun every year. Thank you. I'm Josh Brogren. Uh My first trip was last year. Uh, so it was pretty cool going down there. I've never been down there, seeing everything. Again, like uh, getting to know everyone else. So it was my first time down there, and I was roomed with also a couple seniors and stuff. So, But in the end, I really got to uh, know the people, and it was a lot better playing the games with them because I wasn't really worried about like what they were going to do and stuff. But uh, so... I yeah I had a lot of fun. The team bonding is a big thing, and it really, like, really like wanted me to go there again, and I really really enjoyed it. Thank you. My name is Noah Anzalone, and I've gone on this trip every year that we've had it, and I'd like to thank you guys for letting us go on this trip. I think it's a big part of how our team works. Our team's really family book focus. <laughs> we all have pretty good relationships and Myrtle Beach is a big part of those relationships. And also like Austin said, helps us get in that groove so we're ready for a regular season. I just think overall it just builds a good team of all the chemistry and get to know how people work together. Thank you. So Caden's not going to speak. He got to go on the trip, only, but didn't get to play only by default of he was in my family. So like we're going. <laughs> so he'll get a shot this year. Um, but again, just to remind um, you all of kind of how the trip goes, that JV1 players, which is typically the sophomore team, and returning varsity players all get the invite for the next year. So anybody that played JV1 this year and returning varsities get the invite to go and um, for the following year, so, and we'll take as many as that is. We don't want to uh, seclude anybody. And as far as the room thing, we purposely look at all the kids and see who are friends, and we split them up. And, we, and they all know each other, but yet they don't all know each other as well, and it's worked really well where mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable at first, and they get comfortable with uncomfortable, mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some neat friendships and some neat groups come out of it that you that you didn't expect so thank you moving into 2020 um i have to ask what's why they do that outfit like that what's um, the all of the ballparks are modeled after old ballparks the one you see with the thing with the weird Jetto. with the weird jet out was called the polo grounds okay in new york, new york. Um, and actually, there's a funny story about Elkhorn. So we, <laughs> some of the guys know this. We were um, we were winning by three runs at the end of a game, and they had bases loaded, and it was the last inning. And guy hits a ball to center field. It takes a couple of hops. Our center fielder. Um, who chance won't be named, but <laughs> was, coming, was coming in on the ball, thought routine play, no big deal, couple runs score, we're still good. We still got two outs. It goes under his glove, and it goes all the way to the back of that little thing in the outfield, and he gets it inside the park home run, and we lose. <laughs> so... Uh, Fine. Yeah. Like. So that field kind of haunts us a little bit. I probably, I probably shouldn't have put that on there. Um, but uh, anyway, so 2020, um, some new challenges for us. Quickly, I think I went over a couple of these. We keep the cost down through fundraising. All the kids participate in the card sale. They help run a youth tournament in the summer in order to, to uh, raise money. So we can keep it at that 225 um, per athlete. Uh, Myrtle Beach, we went through that, Jones Coast Travel. So traditionally, our season starts a week before spring break is our first day of practice. And our first comp day of competition, or allowed competition, is the Tuesday of spring break. This year, for some reason, it moved back. So our first day we can scrimmage is 
We start practice on the 23rd. Our first day we can scrimmage is the 28th. Our first day we can compete in a game is the 31st. Where I'm heading with this today <laughs> is asking if we would be allowed or it would be permissible for us to leave the 26th and arrive home on Thursday the 2nd which would mean missing some school the week after. So they miss four days. They would miss four days. Um, I guess one thing about our team is they truly are student athletes. Over the last three years, our, our cumulative GPA as a team has been 3.3 or above. And uh, we would be willing to add to the journaling some online learning. We have Wi-Fi on the bus. We would be willing to take some time during the week to. Uh, allow them, you know, evening time and things like that to meet in the room and do some studying. And we have a few teachers that are, that go with, at least Mike one. Storley is one, yeah, yes. Mike, yeah, Mike, yeah. 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 So, that's the challenge um, for this year, and what that would allow would be uh, four varsity competitions, three JV competitions, and obviously the rest are some of the things that we've already talked about here. And uh, we're asking for your consideration. And they'll work with the teachers their, for their classes and their homework. their homework and all that. Yep. Now, the challenge with that may be we'd have to get to those teachers the week before spring break. Right. Or that week after spring break, whatever that might look like as far as work. It also could look like a nightly check of checking in and emailing teachers saying, mm -hmm. what can I do? Where am I at? Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly a new challenge. And uh, Thank you. We'll get to try it again. We switch classes right before break. Are we going into all new classes? Where, where is that? No, this, the trimester ended that... First or second week, Dan Keel and I just looked at this of March. I think it was the second week of March, so the so two weeks before spring break. So they have some oh, time in their new classes. They would. They would have. I believe it was almost two weeks in their new classes. Okay. That would be. Because they're, they're twelve weeks long, so okay. almost three months. Yeah, that's right. And I'm trying to think because usually we do that at spring break. I mean, I even want to double check. I know John talking is, but because usually we do the last. The last full week of March. Well, not the last full week, because like in the 20, on the, the following year, it goes into March and then April. Oh, okay. It, which is usually the last week in March. Is it WIA that messed us up this year? I don't, you know, I can't find an answer from anybody or asking around why they made this shift. But it was WIA that it made the WIA shift. It was WIA that made okay. the shift, and it was kind of abruptly. Okay. And... Not even Dan Keel has been able to find the answer yet from anybody as to why. Mm -hmm. And so I don't it's know. It's because of the number of practices you have before you can do a game. Correct. Yeah, but I just mean pushing it back instead oh, of leaving it the right. same. Because it used to be the week before. Always, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is to straighten something out, if it's a one-time deal, if we'll never have to deal with it again, and it'll be shifted back to the way it was. Just got some weather. <laughs> I mean, do they run that? Do they keep running those like those yeah, college schools. tournaments every yeah. week for for college and high school? They run it th in through Easter. Okay, so they're yeah. so yeah, it's all the WIA that's taken away that flexibility of that yeah. that starts so is this for when our break is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So when this this camp is, it's only that week. That, I mean, we no, it, it runs from um, latter part of March through Easter is when high school, college, spring training they call it. So high school, college teams are down there and then it shifts in June to youth tournaments at the but same facility. But I'm saying facility. like on the 23rd, it's not available. Like you that week. It is available, we can't, we can't compete can't until the next week. Because that was the trick is oh, WIA oh, says you can't. Because I'm not thinking yeah. that it's competing because you don't get anything out of that. But I they mean, still just, count for a non-conference. They, yeah. they do count. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that they did yeah. that. Because you yeah. don't do that with wrestling. You go and you practice. And you can and just nothing count to do with that. practice games. We can count one on the weekend as a scrimmage. 
but then no, not till Tuesday, you can't. Right. Okay. And you're only allowed one scrimmage. So we were going to do one JV scrimmage, one varsity, Saturday, Sunday, and then a doubleheader varsity and a JV on Tuesday, and then one game each on Wednesday, and then hop on the bus. Our parents have they voiced any opinion, or I haven't really put it out to them yet. Uh, I have. I, I what I do is I send out a sheet with all the returning kids that are eligible as like a verbal commitment who might be interested in going, mm -hmm. and then I revisited that at the end of the season to go, hey, here's some challenges we may face, and nobody has voiced an opinion. My thought is, if we were able to go, I would revisit that again and assure that everybody understands and that. If you don't feel comfortable with that with your son, that's perfectly fine. I understand that. <coughs> as long as they can work it out with the with their their I mean we take trips we, we take trips to go to Europe during yeah, right. school. Mm -hmm. As right. long as we can work it out and they right. you know are getting their education. I mean this is a piece of the education, but as long as they get the brick and mortar education yeah. and families have the ability to choose to send mm -hmm. their child and not send their child, I think it's a great my my all my kids did camps and it it's definitely a learning whether they go or not it wouldn't affect whether they play, right? No. And it has, and we've had kids in the past that have chosen not to go mm -hmm. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, and certainly they pick right up. They would practice with the kids on the freshman team that did not go, so they just practiced that whole week with them mm -hmm. to keep up. Is that a motion? Yeah, we can yeah. a motion. Is that a motion, Mark? Yes, I'll make it a motion. I'll second. And it's been moved and seconded to approve the overnight travel request to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and Appleton, Wisconsin, as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Fun. Oh, I have one more request after that one. You got the summer request? Um, so we're planning to go to the state tournament, so I want to get that overnight approved right away. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I have, to, I so well, I don't want to have to revisit this again during before. the season. Yes. So what I'm asking is for an overnight, three overnights in Appleton, so that when we are attending the state tournament, playing on that field, Woo! that we're already covered. <laughs> And then you, I'm done. You just have to notify us for sure that they when they they go that they're definitely going. That's all we have. Just send us an email. Okay. Technically, then we know. There's no school, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> right. If there's no school, then so we're covered on that. Okay. So moved. We just approved it. We actually approved the motion because oh, okay. we're in there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All all right. Right. We appreciate all right. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for letting me use the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It'll Much improved, John. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> There's hope. There's hope. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank so you. our yeah. cash flow Good luck borrowing. Yes, yeah. sure. True. Uh, this proposed resolution would allow the school district to meet its anticipated cash flow needs for the upcoming school year. Um, it's in a resolution format because that's what required to kind of go through this process and, and the paperwork associated with it. Um, as I think most of you are aware, years ago we used to do a actual promissory note and, and borrow money for the entire school year. Um, but our cash position has improved over the last five or six years. So at this point, we're really just doing a line of credit with one of the local banks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I included there's a statistics sheet, Jason, if you click to that, so back out of this, this is just regulatory stuff. Um, the statistics sheet so, there just yeah. below the resolution. Yeah. If you For click sure. on that. That really right, right there, yeah. yeah. Um, that gives you this more of the history. Uh -huh. The proposal would be up to two million dollars, um, dated September third and maturing August thirty-first. Um, with uh, it'd be a credit union is at the prime variable rate, which actually is lower now. It's five. I was going to say when I saw the five point five, yeah. I thought I think it's lower. Yeah, than that. it is. It's, it went down a quarter percent. Yeah. So, 
Um, it is lower now. And then I think below that, I just put the history of our borrowing over the years. And, and the amount we do now is really fairly insignificant in terms of probably cost compared to what it was years ago when we actually borrowed for the entire school year. And then the, the time involved really in terms of when that happens, I think, is on sheet two. We really have two dates. One is at the end of November, early December. And then the, the other time is um, at the end of May, early June. And you can kind of see the timing if you click the sheet too, Jason. Um, you'll see the, the timing, I think, is about nine days in December and I think in about seven days or eight days in May, June mm -hmm. is the time frame for our borrowing. Mm -hmm. It really has to do just with the timing of when we receive state aids and mm -hmm. tax levy information. There's always proposals to the budget of, of maybe adjusting that so we receive more of our monies earlier. Mm -hmm. And for our district, if that happened, that would probably resolve really our cash flow needs mm -hmm. for the district. Okay. So, but at this point, it's, it's kind of set within those cer certain percentages. So, questions, board members? So, bottom line, it costs us approximately how much again? To uh, uh, about seven thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's about what yeah. our estimate is. And have we always I need to point out, you know, if we were to go back just about 10 years ago, we were over $100,000. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bishop. It, no, just it, it's the note size is up to how much, let's say, like last year did we? Well, you, if you look on that, that sheet, too, it was probably about two. one and a half million. Okay, that, right. As you say, so I didn't think we always did. Right. Okay. It, it just gives us. I guess a little bit of <coughs> right. yeah. Yeah. So you don't necessarily borrow the two, oh, total two Absolutely. million. It's just right. what your need is. Exactly. Need. And I think at one point in I think June we actually borrowed like five hundred thousand for a few days, and then we borrowed mm -hmm. a little more and we paid yeah. it all back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Questions? Yeah, they're waiting on the blockchain. I'll move to approve the resolution authorizing a taxable tax and revenue application anticipation promissory note for cash flow purposes in the amount not to exceed $2 million as presented. Is there a second? No, second. Any other? It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution authorizing a taxable tax and revenue anticipation promissory note for cash flow purposes in an amount not to exceed $2 million as presented. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martel? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarrow? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Motion carried. Approval of school board minutes. We have regular and closed session minutes from July 22nd and closed session meeting minutes from July 29th as different people were at uh, those meetings. We'll need to do them individually. So questions? Otherwise, looking for a motion to approve the July 22nd minutes. I move to approve the minutes of the July 22nd, 2019 regular and closed session school board meeting as presented. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the July 22nd, 2019 regular and closed session school board meeting as presented. Um, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martel? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarrow? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Motion carried. Second meeting, uh, looking for a motion to approve July 29th. I move to approve the minutes of the July 29th, 2019 closed session school board meeting as presented. Is there a second? No second. So moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the July 29th, 2019 closed session school board meeting as presented. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Martel? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarrow? Abstain. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Abstain. Motion carried. General and other fund bills, Mr. Trent? The I mean, you call Mrs. Ingersoll. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So that's what happens. I, I just like, oh. She made the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was one minute to do that, too, because yeah. you start rotating. I forget which one is going to do. It's okay. You have a little tally for now. I'm good. I'll definitely like, start writing it down. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Cam was waiting for me. I went so long without doing it. <laughs> 
The uh, general and other fund bills this evening covers checks number 136842 through 137009, wire transfers 94 through 107, and ACH checks 11 through 18 with a combined amount of $1,602,779.23. And then there was a memo providing some additional information on several of the bills in your packet. And then a copy of the treasurer's report through the month of June is also there. And that represents probably as close to actual final audited numbers, just to let you know, because our audit was last week and they completed most of the field work last week. Um, I had a question. The Loom 360. Um, is that something we do here, or is that something that the student goes? The student goes. So it's actually a school located in East Troy, or just outside of East Troy. Oh yeah. Yeah, we so talked about it, that last okay, time. Okay, so it's not just. Just mm -hmm. it's not just a class. It's all it's the school, classes. It's a school all day. It's a school. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got program. the impression from the notes. I was thinking it was just a class, and that that's why I was. It was a pricey class. Now. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. right. right. Well, that's but, a good question. Yeah, but that's yeah, why I was wondering day, where, where it was located. So now I know what we're talking about. Yeah. So. Okay. I did have one question. Um, the Winnet County Community School it says it represents a yearly membership to the property. What does that mean? Property and cash would be property and cash. Oh, property and insurance and cash. Oh, okay. They, they serve as fiscal agent within the co op. <laughs> okay. So that's why it's made to that school district. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? For a motion to approve our general and other fund bills. I move to approve the general and other fund bills of August 12, 2019. Check numbers 136842 to 137009. Wire transfers 094 to 107. And ACH check numbers 011 to 018. In the combined amount of one million six hundred two thousand seven hundred seventy nine dollars and twenty three cents, as presented. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the general and other fund bills of August 12, 2019. Checks number 136842 to 137009. Wire transfer 094 to 107. ACH check number 011 to 018. In the combined amount of $1,602,779.23, cents, as presented. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Obama? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarrow? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martel? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, report and discussion on seclusion and restraint by office. Good evening. I'm Rita Gaffis. I'm the Director of Special Education and Pupil Services. And um, due to the fact that we do have some new board members here tonight, uh, for some of you this is old information, but for the new board members that may not have heard anything about what seclusion and restraint is in the school system, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of information before I make the, um, the annual required presentation that uh, DPI requires us to make to you, okay? So, um, you should know that this uh, act does apply to both regular and special education students, um, all public schools and our charter school, um, and but it does not apply to law enforcement officers. So our SRO is not under this same mm -hmm. um, obligation, mm -hmm. okay? So if we do have to call um, in the SRO or the police, um, at that point, we should be backing off and not doing anything because we have called for mm -hmm. help. Okay. So the definition of a physical restraint is a restriction that immobilizes or reduces the ability to move um, freely the torso, the arms, or the legs, or the head of a student. And seclusion is uh, the confinement of a student away from other students uh, in an area, and the key here is they are physically prevented from leaving. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the use of physical restraint or in seclusion in public schools uh, is only used and can only be used when there's a clear, present, and eminent risk of physical harm to self or others. Um, 
It can only be used when there are no contraindications uh, to its use because of medical conditions. You know, if there would be a student that would have some certain kind of medical condition that would preclude that, you cannot use it. Um, the degree and uh, of force and the length of the seclusion must be consistent and reasonable as not to provide any risk of danger to the student. And you cannot use any prohibited maneuvers. All of our staff that uh, have the possibility of engaging in seclusion and restraint are trained in nonviolent crisis intervention where the uh, main emphasis is on de-escalation and not getting to seclusion and restraint. That is our goal, is that we don't want to seclude or restrain. We only can do that if they are a clear, present, uh, eminent physical risk to self or others. And so um, we are trained in the maneuvers that are legal, okay? And then the company that we use would back us up if anything would happen. You said all staff members. No, that are, are would have the likelihood. How do you define likelihood? You, um, you student, can't, students. I mean, special ed, and you can classify people, but you don't know. I think this is something that we should have a, uh, ex, at least exposure on in-service so all faculty and staff members understand what is and isn't acceptable. Okay, um, all staff do receive uh, information on de-escalation. All, all staff have received a review of that, so that is everybody. Um, they do not all receive um, the training in the physical maneuvers. As we, I don't think that's something that we really want. So uh, de-escalation part, yes, but have, you want to have a team that is a cohesive team trained that knows how to work together and they are called that is the recommendation of the, mm -hmm. the company and the training that uh, we receive, not to train your whole staff. I think there's some areas that are more prevalent to make sure. Mm -hmm. You know, Phi Ed, where there's bats or sticks or that, shop classes where there's chisels and saws. And I think there's some that we might want to look a little bit further into to at least make those people more aware of what I can and can't do before we get into a situation. I certainly can do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, to train them in the physical maneuvers, I, I wouldn't recommend that, and I don't think that the company would recommend but that. I mean, but so to train understand. them in what they can and can't do, yes, I can yeah. certainly do okay. that. Thanks for the suggestion, Paul. Um, we don't want um, we don't want maneuvers or techniques that um, don't give adequate attention to protecting the child's head. We want to make sure that we're always doing that. Um, you don't want to have anything that's on the floor that might cause any type of chest compression or on the diaphragm or the abdomen. Um, weight or pressure on the student's neck or you know in some type of an odd you know um, position so that they might injure themselves. And um, of course, there would be no corporal punishment, and there would be nothing having to do with any type of um, art, you know, anything that would restrain them that is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think that, you know, like a robe no or. Mechanical. No mechanical. Thank you. I'm getting to that. No mechanical. Um, yeah, no mechanical restraints are allowed. I was ahead of myself. It's not physical restraint to touch a student on the shoulder, hands, arms, or to comfort them or to touch their back or anything like that, okay? That is not considered physical restraint. Um, it is when you do not allow the free movement of the arms, the legs, the torso. Okay? Seclusion, again, should only be used um, when there's a clear, present, uh, eminent risk of physical harm to self or others. And um, so that's similar to uh, restraint. Um, the, there has to be. I, I just want to mention, Rita, like the, the CPI restraints that are taught, they're very different from what you would see with like law enforcement. Yes. Um, right. Yeah. To the they point where different. they're almost good it's luck very, with a high school yeah, age kid. Exactly. It's, very, it's kid. very difficult. Yeah. It, it might be right? okay if someone grabs your hair. This one might work where you're smashed your head down, but <laughs> it's not like a martial art or something right. where. If someone's coming with a chisel, they've got some great CPI move. It's, yeah. That's not it. I mean, no. it, it's, yeah, very limiting. And, mm -hmm. and for example, if yeah. the kid, 
and, and I used to be CPI trained at a facility. Once you go to a ground, I mean, that's right. not a move. Now you have to let go. Yep. You have to let go when to go to the ground. Yeah. Yep. yep. And police, what do you do? You're, you you take machine. them to the ground. <laughs> yep. control them. Exactly. So yeah. it, it, it's a control very, control it's a very limiting, like Rita said, the goal is to de use the de-escalation de because they are kind of useless. I, I don't want to say they're useless because they are used to escort or get kids to the, they, the location. They but. do teach you, uh, you know, defensive stances, defensive maneuvers. You yeah. know, it's your first mm -hmm. while you're trying to de-escalate the student. And the first time a student, you have to encounter a student in that way, it may come as a, as a surprise to them, but they learn very quickly what the teacher can or cannot do. They know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they know. Yeah. So, yeah. Do. And, and it's, it's interesting. But, but the vast majority, like Rita said, that de-escalation techniques were so helpful. And in my two years of working mm -hmm. in group, I never had to initiate a restraint yeah. because I really took to heart the de-escalation yeah. piece yeah. Didn't, and utilized it. Well, kind of along the same lines, but didn't um, Greg used to teach mm -hmm. a class? I don't know if it was de-escalation. That's, de -escalation. The, that's yeah. the right. he was, Okay, because he was trained in it and he could train others. Now our, so, now our okay. school psychologists. We, we have in our district and we have one high school teacher you have to have a quite an extensive it's a two or three day training right, and, right. and it's quite expensive um, and our school psychologists are all up for that okay. this year so our budget um, in that area and NBCI is up this year because they are renewed and they receive their training as a trainer and then they are the ones that perform the training here know. right I don't oh, do okay. it yeah okay yeah um, you know, when you're secluding a student, again, this is not permitting them to leave an area. We do have seclusion rooms in our district. They all have windows. They're all padded. Mm -hmm. um, again, it has to be constant supervision. You have to be watching the child through the window. Um, seclusion is no longer used when they are not a risk to self or others. They will check. Are, are you calm? When you're calm, you can come out. Let me know if you're calm. Come out. Um, and again, adequate access to bathrooms, drinking water, all this seems very common sense, but years ago, um, the reason they have to have this in the act is because years ago there were kids who were kept in closets and you know, not given vet proper ventilation, not given water breaks, and, you know, and for much longer times than they were um, allowed to be, at, or that was reasonable. And I'm not saying our school district, I'm just saying that's why the law had to be written like this, yeah. because it was abused. So. Um, and our rooms um, all have meet these requirements. Okay, there are no locks or uh, latches or, or any fixtures available to the students so that they might hurt themselves or be locked in. And my question: If we had a lockdown and we had children in there because there was a danger in the school, what would you do in those classrooms since you can't lock the door? The classrooms yeah. have locks, but the, the seclusion, seclusion rooms don't are Well, I, I know, but, the, but if you have a child... I might have everybody in huddle in the seclusion room to be honest. Okay. I just, just wonder what you do for security, what, yes. what we do. So the, the regular classroom, so all of our seclusion rooms are within a classroom. Oh, they are within a classroom? Yes. yes. I yes. thought we had right some that were separate and found in. They're in, they're in a classroom, oh. accessible oh. from a classroom. Oh, okay, so you would just move them into the classroom. Well, the, no, they're, they're within, so you'd lock the classroom doors, they're within the classroom. They're, it's like a closet within a classroom, but it's okay. bigger. It's I thought it was a full room. I thought I just remembered a full room. That no. Was. Okay. Small. Okay. You can staff shut the door and be on the opposite side of yeah. the exclusion. Yeah. Right. And then you're, they're looking in in the window. So you the don't staff have to put their in. foot in no, the No, because the that's why they're put in there is because they might, they're, the risk of harming Correct. the teacher or themselves. But they're allowed to shut the door and do that. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. that's, that's, if they're prohibited from leaving, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's 30 seconds, sometimes it might be more minutes than that, but we try to keep it at a, a duration that is consistent with the age of the child, just like you would do a timeout for your students, as long as they can, if they can pull themselves together and not be a risk, you know. Is this different than the room where we have, like where they can sensory? Calm down? Yeah. Sensory. Yes. So that's probably what I'm no. thinking of, the sensory room. The sensory room. room has access from the outside hallway. Okay. But, and that one has a lock on the outside. Okay, yeah. all right. See, that's probably what I'm thinking of because I probably have not. There's no latches on this. It's a free okay. swinging door. Okay. Well, it free swings one way. 
Right. It wouldn't work well together. It's like the old bar. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> One way. Okay, so they can hold it shut with their body. Okay, so that's and that's what they basically do is they hold it shut with their body. Some kids, you know, just need to be in there and you don't even have to hold the door shut because they're just in there calming themselves down. But if a kid is violent and banging on the door, then you have to <coughs> see if calm enough. Um, oh, so these are what is not seclusion, you know, telling a kid to take a walk or to step outside the classroom, that's not seclusion. So, um, so I wanted to talk about the notification that's required. Um, there has to be a report written. I, I get access to all those reports. They're sent through our EduClimber system. And... Um, you have 24, bis or 24 business days, 24 hours. hours. However, I, my staff cannot leave the school day um, before that report is sent okay. in to me and sent to the parents. So okay. I am overly and above what the law requires. Okay. Um, they have to notify the students' parents that day that it has occurred. Most often, um, my people will um, notify within the hour of when it's happened. They won't even wait mm -hmm. till the end of the day. Um, and within two business days, there has to be a written report. Again, we have that on Edge of Climber. It's very easily accessible. And again, the report is written before they go home for the school day. And then it is available to the parents um, right away that night. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't wait the three days. Mm -hmm. I want to be open and transparent. Mm -hmm. So here I am before <laughs> September 1st. It's August 12th, right? Um, I'm giving this report to you, and I have to report to you the number of in incidents of seclusion and the number of restraints that took place and the total number of students involved and the number of students with disabilities. Um, I have to report to you, and I'll do that in just a couple of slides. Um, no one can use physical restraint or seclusion unless they've been trained. Um, and they are, you have to have training, and anybody who's engaged in our school has had that training. And keep a record of the training received by the staff. And so we have that available as well. Our school psychologists keep all that. And we have a validated program. So here's the report from this year. I'm happy to report that it is down quite a bit from last year. You want to maybe control minus one? Thank you, Jason. So that's as simple as our report is. The number of incidents of seclusion is how many times a student was secluded, how many restraints were used in the um, school year, how many students were involved in those, and the number of students with disabilities. And I believe the number of students with disabilities is exactly the same as students as involved. There were no um, seclusions or restraint used with students that did not have IEPs. Okay. But our numbers are significantly reduced from last year, as well as the numbers from Lakeland were significantly reduced from last year. So our, our totals were significantly down this year from a year ago. Yeah, which is good. I think, um, you know, we provided that extra de-escalation training, and I think that that, um, at the end, reviewed that, and I think that was has been helpful. Um, we have, you know, our teachers are veteran staff, and sometimes it just depends on whether a student is getting more help from the outside, um, medical help, family help, therapy, medication. There can be all kinds of reasons. Just a change in environment, et cetera. So, and again, it can depend on whether a student has moved in or out. It can make a difference in our numbers as well. So just a question on that total number of students involved and then number of incidents. It's like 55, and there's, so it's saying that there's six students that have had 55 mm -hmm. incidents, is mm -hmm. that correct, of seclusion? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they're repeat, repeat. Yeah. Right. Okay. Keep, just in, mind that, sure. keep in mind that Jackson, and maybe you don't know this, Mr. Skier, that Jackson is uh, the home of our um, specialized program for students with significant behavioral um, and mental health needs, and so that is why Jackson's number is no, I was aware of it. I think so it kind of, okay, yeah. yeah, so that's why the number looks disproportional there. Mm -hmm. Because um, 
when when I don't want to duplicate services in another building, you know, right. because we have the program here at Jackson, when we see there's incidents of seclusion and restraint increasing at the other two elementary schools at Tibbetts and Westside, we will then have an IEP mm -hmm. to see if they're, you know, the least restrictive, maybe to change the least restrictive environment. Thank you. So, I mean, I'd love to see that there's no incidents at the high school, but what do you attribute the, that factor to going from elementary to middle school um, and then all of a sudden it's zero? I think there's several. Um, one, it's almost... It's almost impossible. impossible to yeah. do it yeah, because right. of the physical size. Right. Yeah. Um, some kids with more significant behavioral problems might go to a different school by that time. Okay. They might choose another opportunity um, where um, just the change in environment um, has uh, is enough that mm -hmm. you know they they don't need that. Mm -hmm. Another uh, adolescence is moving. You know, we're out of that. You know, intense. I mean, high school can still be pretty intense regarding puberty, but I mean, I'd say, um, mm -hmm. and I think there's that risk by the time they get to high school that they, kind of, it's kind of like, you know, they probably come release like, on me. When I would have a, okay. a, a teacher call and say, hey, Johnny's in my class, he's refusing to leave the classroom. I would go down to the classroom, I would walk in very quietly, I'd squat down next to Johnny, and I'd whisper to him and say, hey, I'm sorry that you're upset. I'd love for you to come down to the office and talk to me. And if he'd be like, believe no, or whatever, I'd say, that's fine. You've got 30 seconds, and I'm calling law enforcement, and they'll come and mm -hmm. cuff you and get you out of the room. Because mm -hmm. they don't have to follow and the same. Every single time, right. okay, fine. Okay. And they get up. Okay. Yeah. It, it's, there's that certain level where yeah. Know, it doesn't happen as often, but they yeah. also, okay, we're not going hands on. Our high school yeah. teachers are yeah. trained, you know, the safe. special ed staff is all trained, but. Okay. I mean, at some point, it's like, what risk are you putting the staff and faculty at? We, we, see, yeah, you know, we typically right. see a really drop at, as they go from the middle, you know, as they from go from the elementary, elementary to middle, middle school, mm -hmm. to the middle school yep. to high school. Yeah. I can't even think, it. I'm, I could look back to see if we even had any high school since I've been here. Some of it could be maturity and understanding right. and understanding how they work. Right. And we don't even have a seclusion room at the high school. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions for me? It's not my favorite report to give you every year, but um, no, is there is there any benefit to having the kids that I mean, there's six students between West and Tibbetts. Is there talk about those kids being at Jackson and having them with more staff and um, say that again? Well, the incidents I'm looking at Tibbetts and at Westside. Yes. I mean, because we have the program at Jackson. Right. Is it ideal to have those students all together instead of having them all separated in the three elementaries? Well, and having them in that that's an IEP team decision, yeah. and so for, it's made individually okay. for each child. We try to keep a child in the least restrictive environment mm -hmm. for as long as possible. When we get to a point where um, it, you know the student's education is just suffering so much from the behavior, mm -hmm. we have to try something different, mm -hmm. and a different environment mm -hmm. is one way to look at. Them. And some of those students, some of those numbers that you see are reflecting reflecting incidents that took place at Westside or possibly Tibbetts where the student is not placed at Jackson in the ACE mm -hmm. program. Does that oh, make that sense? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. about last year. Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't, yeah, they're going to have, have several incidents before for, they can't get duplicate service. You know, service. when I've got, you know, one teacher's time is being taken up all day long yep. with one student yep. at, at that, and the well, that's what and he's like not learning, together. and then the yeah. education of the other students is interrupted so much. You have to weigh that, but it's an individual education plan decision that's made by the team. And and let me tell you, our staff does not take this lightly. I mean, no. when a kid has to leave Tibbetts or Westside okay. to come to Jackson, I, I've seen teachers who tear up, you know, because they're... They feel like they failed. They feel like yeah. they failed. So they, 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 you know, they, they feel like, well, maybe I should have tried, or maybe I should have... Uh, yeah. They feel very responsible, and um, that's the commitment from that staff, even though they know it probably is the best thing at the time for the student. It's very hard for them. Mm -hmm. They do not take it lightly. It, it's not like, you know, teachers are like, oh, let's just send them over to Jackson. No, right. it's not like that at all. Any questions? Hopefully, 
a more upbeat report the next time I'm on. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, I, I think that is positive on the, the amount of progress that we've made. And numbers down. When we first started the ACE program, I mean, we had, I believe, Rita, if we went back, I mean, there was a year or two where the restraints were above 80, I believe, in the ACE program. Okay. Um, last, year was, last year was a rough one so, last year. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of those can be involved with just one student. Oh, yeah. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like you say. Remember and, how many days you're in school. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rita. Here's reading the revised policies. Okay, there's a number of the revised policies. The co-curricular policy was tabled and revisited with the um, policy committee. I'll go ahead and pull that one up first. And okay, let me blow this up a little bit larger. This is the version showing the proposed changes. Um, the first one here, the GPA was relatively simple. They just wanted to align it with the GPA of the point value of AC minus, um, which is a 1.7. A 1.65 is between a B plus and a C minus. So they wanted to adjust that point value to be reflective of that. Um, and then we did a, a lot of work related to the, the different categories and the trying to clean up and make it more of an all-encompassing um, fit. And so that's where you'll see like this period of analogy will include means category one. You see that struck because we're trying to group them more into the a co-curricular, you know, being all-inclusive there. Um, changing language to you know, a student instead of an athlete because we're incorporating, it's inclusive of clubs, co-curriculars, any sort of extra event. Uh, changing the language to include all classes, not just the first hour class. I'm sorry. Um, and that's, I think Dan does a nice job of using the discretion working with kids on that. Um, so, language change here, this would now read consuming or possessing alcoholic beverages, controlled substances, tobacco products, um, or e-cigarettes, vaping is considered unacceptable and is a co-curricular code violation. And then we added language down here, so you'll see we struck the selling piece and the providing and we added the language to, to here, where a student who sells, provides, or transports with the intent to distribute, or has a gathering his home or product. Or so we included, because this is a more severe penalty, the violation, instead of being considered a first offense, is considered a second mm -hmm. offense. Um, so that is a difference where before, you could sell, and that would be a first offense, which was the same as consuming. We felt that, anyway, yeah. that's, how is that different than hosting a party? Mm -hmm. so, so. Um, then this is all yep. uh, new language. Yeah. Uh, this is adding language back in on, on the attending of the gathering. It does provide provision for students who say they have a friend. Hey, I'm really messed up. I need to be picked up. The student goes, picks up the kid, and is not participating or hanging out at the party, um, as determined by you know the investigation. And that would not be a, a violation. It also has language in there that um, victims of sexual assault and bystanders who report a sexual assault um, will basically have amnesty mm -hmm. related to that violation, because we wouldn't want someone not to report. Hey, I saw so-and-so gets sexually assaulted, but I don't want to say anything because I'll get a co-curricular violation for being at the party. You'd like to think that someone would not you know, worry about that, but it happens, yep. it's happened, so we wanted to make sure that that wasn't an obstacle. And I've seen a lot of colleges moving mm -hmm. to that as well, where they have, within their honor codes, um, 
to encourage the students supporting other kids to protect them. Um, we changed this um, in really instead of persistent, justice gives the principal more leeway that disruptive behavior <coughs> or any kind of behavior in violation or subject to penalties under the Elkhorn High School District policy. So if it's a severe enough, say it's a, a fight, it doesn't have to be persistent that, hey, you've had multiple fights now. It's you know, sorry, that's yeah. that was enough that we're going to. I think I'm looking at violation. the the ones with the changes, and persistent is still in here. And the one that was attached is nobody showing us at all. It's not right, it but doesn't I, have any of the changes. No, I know because we've that, looked at those at okay. committee, but it still says <coughs> persistent. I wonder why it doesn't because I just clicked this right from no, the mine, agenda. Mine's got a purple line through it. Oh, I I took the one that was attached yeah, to my to my uh. It's not green, it's purple. No, no, mine isn't, it doesn't have any colors in it. It had the highlighting. Right on the bottom of the yeah, And he's got the same one. And oh, a lot of the changes are in there, but persistent is still in there. I don't know. I wonder if it's because we all have, yeah. I just want to make sure. Your show. Yeah, no, I mean, it's the same document, so I'm wondering if there's something in the Google Docs setting that isn't. Showings. I mean, the one up here is my. Right here. So this is. Yeah. Are you in editing mode? There is a showing up. Yeah. View only. View only. Huh. Oh. I don't know what's going on with the Google Docs. Oh, okay, settings, I just, I mean, I caught that. that it just, so as long as we don't have persistent, because we talked about that. So if you can follow along, I'll just go yeah, through. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I just want to make sure. Oh, Alright, Jordan, just to make a note, as we're going through on the edited version, for some reason the Docs pulling up looking different. Some of the board members aren't seeing the edits. Some of them are. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look at that for the Yeah, so oh, the flagrant okay. and the sports. Maybe we. In, in the future, we'll just have to shift it to a PDF <laughs> file for sharing here. And then. I but then I, I can't make changes. Right. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. Um, okay. Continuing to go down, cyber image. Um, that hasn't changed. Added the unsportsmanlike language. Now, some of the language that's included in this is boilerplate from WIAA. Um, so this is um, boilerplate as well from the WIAA. Um, basically, if they're disqualified from the contest, let's see. Uh, a student disqualified from a contest for a flagrant or unsportsmanlike conduct is suspended from interscholastic um, competition for no less than the next competitive event, but not less than one complete game or meet. Note the penalty shall be served in the sport in which the offense occurred. If that sports season is completed, then it shall be served in the next sport or sports season. So the kid got suspended the last game of the year in a soccer game, and they go up across country the next year, they would be served that suspension then. Any player who, in the judgment of the official, intentionally spits on strikes, slaps, kicks, pushes, or aggressively physically contacts an official at any time shall be immediately ineligible for competition, a minimum of 90 calendar days from the date of the confrontation. In addition, the player is ineligible to compete for the first 25% of the next season in that same sport. Um, I've seen this happen in football, mm -hmm. where the official is part of the field, and you know, a kid will. Paul, you've probably seen that yeah. a time or two in your career, where a kid will intentionally run into the official in the middle of the game and act like they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen it happen much, but in a case like that, if the officials rule that no, you intentionally did that, they're out 90 calendar days and 25% of the next season. And that's a WIA. Rules, so we figured putting it in our co curricular policy just helps them know those guidelines. So it's for you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, co-curricular code, changing the language, moved it from athletic to Dan's really our activities director is what he is, and he has been for several years, so giving that clarification, activities director. This process on the reporting and investigation, we wanted to give some specific language so it didn't look like the, uh, the appeals process of when you get investigated is redundant there or going to the same person. So um, it is something that the athletic director shall arrange a conference with the student to take place within five days or a reasonable amount of time after the allegation has been made. The student in question may continue to practice and compete until the initial conference is had. The activities director shall have the direct discretion to modify the minimum penalty based on the nature of the offense. And it says, uh, adding language, students are expected to tell the truth throughout any investigation. If it's found that a student has lied or otherwise impeded an investigation, their penalty may be increased. Uh, this is WIAA um, new requirements. Any student which has been charged or convicted of a felony is immediately ineligible for all participation in WIAA activities until the student has satisfied all of the requirements ordered by the court in declaring the sentence served, including probation, community service, and any other court orders. Um, that can end up being a very lengthy mm -hmm. sentence. Uh, mm -hmm. And we don't have control over that. That's the WIA. So you could have a kid do something their freshman year and be on court order probation for three years and they're ineligible for WIA sports while on that. Um, it does not carry over from middle school. So if you have somebody who did something in middle school, they get a clean slate going into high school. It doesn't matter if they're under court order for the next. 10 years, it's only related to high school. And that's only first athletes. That's not gonna, there's no reading of that that it would go into other co curricular activities. Right, this is for the WIA sports. Correct. One of the discussions that we had for the reason why we don't want to mimic that is we want those kids involved and engaged. We don't want them <coughs> cut off. Co-curriculars are important to that development of the students, so we want them to be able to um, be involved there. This is just um, a chart that gives you an idea based on the number of events, what the suspensions would look like. We talked about just possibly uh, deleting that one there. I think we decided to leave it in um, for now because it's you know, one third people can do the math, but it's, it's just a conversion chart. Um, let me minimize this a little bit more. Then we did change or add quite a bit of different language here. We felt that um, if a student does get a co curricular violation, um, we wanted this as a step for the students upon receiving a violation, the students' counselor will be notified and a student may be required to complete an AODA assessment, enroll in treatment, and show proof of active participation in the recommended program with a qualified provider prior to returning uh, to competition. Uh, we put in here, may be required, that way, you know, the activities director, they can use their discretion on it. If it's not something related to AODA issues, then, you know, may not be required. It also, we understand that active participation recommended programs, some of these programs take months to get into. So we're not gonna hold a kid from um, continuing to participate in other events, but they need to demonstrate that they're working towards that and getting in the program. Um, when the penalty cannot be completed within the sports season, including the WIA tournament, that penalty will continue the um, athletes next sports season. This is related to athletes. Athletes who are ineligible during the WIA tournament for any reason may not appear in uniform, participate in worms, and may not participate in awards ceremony at the WIA tournament. So again, that's the WIA rule. Um, changed from athletic code to co-curricular code, then added a student who transfers from any school, whether or not a member school, with the status of ineligibility for disciplinary reasons, and as a result of another state association regulation or sanction retains such status at his or her new school for the same period as decreed by the former school. Again, that's another WIA mm -hmm. mandate there. Mm -hmm. So a kid comes from Illinois and has a three-game suspension, they have to serve three games here. Mm -hmm. 
um, appeal procedures. The just adding that it's the activities director um, that they have to notify. Then the activities direct, director will receive a written appeal no later than five days from the receipt of the student's um, written infraction. The student is ineligible during the appeal process. The activities director will assemble an appeals committee, but he or she does not vote. Um, the appeals committee will consist of an assistant principal. We remove students from the appeals committee, two teachers, and two varsity coaches to add the numbers back in. We felt that the students created potential um, confidentiality issues or lack of students being forthright as the reasons why they are doing that or HIPAA violations, or HIPAA violations potentially, yeah. Um, because they're not employees of the, the school district. Here. The appeals committee shall keep all student information confidential. Meeting will be audio recorded for the keeping of minutes. We felt that it was important to, it's pretty simple to set up the paper and we can have the minutes if any questions ever come up down the road. Or if we get sued and it has to go to court, now you're not relying on testimony of the people there, we have a transcript of it, like expression. On yeah. the activities director changing. Um, let's see, the committee may ask questions to assist them in determining guilt or non-guilt or whether or not the penalty should be modified due to extenuating the circumstances. These questions can also help in determining the penalty that would be assessed. Previously, they were just supposed to ask questions related to guilt or non-guilt, yet the whole point of the appeals process was to seek clemency or some other positive solution. So in order to take that into consideration, we want to give them the leeway to look at that. Upon completion of the appeal procedure, decision been made, the accused may appeal in writing the committee's decision to the principal within two business days of the committee's decision. The principal, after reviewing and or investigating the committee's record, may modify the athletic director's and or appeals committee determinations and or penalty if warranted. Um, that language we just cleaned up um, some green, but the spirit of what was always there was there. So ultimately, that final check is that principal to review the appeals committee. And then it stops that appeals process. It keeps it from getting to the superintendent school board level where you don't want to be caught up in, in those. Yeah. Um, travel, that's just some cleaning up of the, the language there. And then you'll see on categories, You'll see, Paul, this is where we struck the categories. You mentioned the mm -hmm. different categories that it used to have. We felt we added the language to make it so that it's just co-curricular activities, and there's no longer a category one activity, two, or a three. Um, there was some inequity in how that was applied depending on what event you were in um, when they were broken out in categories. But first offense, um, Student will lose competition privileges. We changed that from participation to competition privileges and or travel rights. Because when a kid gets a co-curricular violation, you still want them to go to the practices or the, the meetings. It's mm -hmm. the competition that they're losing access to. And that's for up to one third of the season. Um, and in this language here, students in elected positions will lose their elected office during their suspension. Some organizations may require removal from the organization or their elected position after one violation. In those cases, the organization's bylaws will supersede the co curricular code penalties. Uh, there are certain chapters, national level organizations, where they have bylaws and requirements at that national level that um, doesn't matter what we want to do locally, they have rules similar to the WIA. Second offense. Um, the student will lose competition privileges and or travel rights in the first chronicle event. Uh, it's two-thirds of the season. Third offense is um, for one calendar year. And that's the changes. Questions, concerns, or thoughts? I just want to say thank you to the committee that really dug into this and made the changes that they felt were necessary. I 
Yeah, I thought they did a great job. We're going to try something here. So Matt, do you see the markups? I do. See, Barb, you're on there too. Yeah, see, I, I, don't and see I, the markups. I, I don't. I did it one time. Let me show you something. I had two, two edits on mine. Refresh, see if you see that now. I can't uh, just refresh this. Okay. Yeah, I don't see that. Nothing still? Hmm. All right, I'm just trying to pinpoint is it within your Google settings that we need to go and, and check or change if we're going to look in that way or yeah. someone else's. Okay. Yeah, we know who has that. Right. Wait a For the time sake, maybe I'll look at this after. Yeah. I, mean, I, I change. What I, I, went, I went back yeah, and refreshed the agenda. Yeah. Went back so, in and now I get the. Yeah, yeah. See, I refreshed an idea. I refreshed okay. okay, I refreshed the agenda. Uh, and I, I, did, I did too. Huh. Okay. I don't and now I have it. Well, I just changed your setting though to edit mode instead of oh, view you mode. Julia. Yeah, all kinds of pages now. Oh yeah, now my I think mine's working. It's refreshing now. Oh, okay. I refreshed the other one. The yeah. school board one. It, it didn't work for me. Just so you know. I mean, I have no, well, you need to all see all the, the, yeah. the language. For me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're still no, needing it. That's weird. <laughs> mine, no, mine does. Now yours does. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm suspecting that maybe it's because you have to have edit mode to see it. Possibly. So I'm wondering, so I just added all of you to edit mode. Just be careful not to edit it now. No, no I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. But see if, uh, refresh and see if it shows up now. Okay. Yeah. Julia, I get all kinds of stuff. Yes. Yeah. All right, so that's what it is. You've got to have edit mode in order to see the proposed edits. Okay. All right. Well, we know that moving forward. Up, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So everybody should have be able to see the edits. All right. I'll just I'll remember that in the future then for the rest of the time. So looking at continuing on co-curricular because this is a fun one. Um, Three seventy. This one's pretty simple. And again, if you don't have it, it's I just need to add you to the edit mode. Yeah. We can always go back and do that. Yeah. But if you want, to, it's changing it to co-curricular policy, making sure that we have the same non-discrimination language in that. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's And then we're proposing to delete 370, yeah. the rule. Yeah. Because it's no longer needed or relevant. It's built within that policy. That may be Paul, that's what, what he you're was looking because I went and looked and it's like so oh, we're proposing to delete that one, two, and three all together. Right. Yeah. And then we have the Start College Now program. Um, striking that language beginning July 1, 2000 will pass that date. So that's not really relevant anymore. And then the district will pay, we struck instead of for no more than, we put for up to the equivalent of combined total of 18 post-secondary credits for any course they're taking through Start College Now program or the Early College Credit program. We add the language the district may pay for additional post-secondary credits depending on the student's chosen pathway. So it's removing that hard cap of 18 credits okay. with our okay. options career and college program. And that gives them the flexibility to utilize those gateway courses um, like we talked about previously. And they typically run about $375 a course 
Um, so the margins are, are good for us on that, that we can support that. Um, any questions on the policies? I know there was a lot, but it was, I think, good work on the, the co-curricular policy and yeah. incorporates it into to the one. Uh, recommendations of Mr. Commissioner Tis the season for hiring. <laughs> um, right. yeah, I, I printed this one off for me just so I <laughs> try to make it a little um, easier here. Um, yes, yeah, so we have uh, Danielle Dunham. She is a Westside uh, art teacher. I want to wish her really well. She's really had a strong desire to pursue her administrative um, career and you know, we were working with her here, but she had an opportunity in Silver Lake uh, to take a position as a dean of students. So she went and took that position, and we want to wish her well in, in her, her new endeavor. And hopefully, the time that we spent with her will help her in her next step in her career. So we're very happy for happy for her. And then we also have the resignation of, um, or these were people that I believe were hired, but they're not joining us this year. Plans have changed. That happens sometimes in the part-time positions. They were at the tutors, um, Alexis Coyne and Sean uh, Beesbeier. We want to thank you for considering us um, to work and wish them Sean well. Sean is actually with us. Actually. Oh, Sean is, and was with Alexis us. is, is, is that situation. In, okay. Yeah. Then we have a resignation of uh, Robert Hanna as the uh, girls' tennis coach. He won't be coming back next year. And I have a lot of appointments. I'll just go through these. Um, Natalie Erb, she'll be joining us as a fourth grade teacher. Uh, she'll be replacing Steve Nelson, who accepted a position in his hometown over in Milton. And Natalie is joining us. I forgot where Natalie's coming. Kenosha? Kenosha School District. Most recently, she lives in, lives in Lake Geneva. Okay. And then we have a, um, Amanda Rowley, who's served a number of long term sub positions for us in the school district, including um, in our classes. She'll be joining us as a West Side art teacher replacing Danielle Dunham. We have um, Carolyn Kaisley will be joining us as a middle school social studies teacher, and she'll be replacing uh, Kelly Burmeister for the 2019-20 school year, who's taken a, a leave. And then Trisha Le uh, Leva is joining us as an EL teacher, you might more commonly know as an ESL teacher. From, she's joining us from Delavan Darianne, and this is a additional position for us this coming year with the influx of students um, and the needs for our ESL language. We're utilizing a transfer of service, which allows us to increase our budget to cover the cost to hire that, that teacher. So she's very experienced, um, began her career in California, but most recently has been in the Delvin Darianne School District for the last five years. Um, Linnea Bass is joining us as a tech intern for the district. Erica Anderson is going to continue um, her payroll specialist duties for the school district. Um, Jane Hummer Prznowski is uh, coming on as a cook for us at Jackson. Vicki Bedouz, if any of you know if I'm mispronouncing a name, let me know. Um, Bedouzi. Bedouzi. Thank you. <laughs> Because I, I, I'll introduce them in, or the principals, or people will introduce them at the, the new staff meeting. But, uh, she's joining us as a special education teaching assistant. Chandler Kaiser was selected to serve as an avid teaching assistant. He'll be replacing uh, Rachel Lutz. And then Shannon Schumacher, Tara Hansen, Megan Bulow, Hannah Wattenpuel, and Thomas Snow are all joining us as part-time avid tutors. Kyle Hoskins is joining us as a girls' assistant basketball coach. He'll be replacing John Chavonic for the um, 1920 school year. We want to thank John for his service. And then we have Chandler Kaiser, um, who has been selected to replace BZ Kaiser for the girls' soccer head coach position. Kristen Kilkenny will be transferring to a, a part-time school counselor position shared between the middle school and the high school, probably spending the bulk of her time at, at the high school. And then Todd Galani will be transferring from the middle school health teacher to fill the uh, middle school counselor position, replacing Chris and Kilkenny. And then Jeff Tischer will be transferring from middle school eighth grade math to the become the middle school health teacher. 
And um, then Elsa Sanchez will be joining us as a special ed teaching assistant, and Ellen Gwitowski. Will transfer from West Side to Tibbetts, replacing Jose Huerta. See, I got the Spanish. Over <laughs> <laughs> the 1920 school year. Just a question on the Abbott. Yes. The difference between the teaching assistant and the tutors is that full time, part time? Yes, or? that's the difference. That's the difference? Okay. Yep. And those tutors sometimes come for like an hour or two a week, which is why we oh, have so okay. many of them because okay. based on their college schedule when their availability is. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Did Kelly remind me, did she give a resignation? I was just taking a year leave of that. Any questions? I was looking for a motion to approve. So moved. And a second? Second. So moved and seconded to approve the personal recommendation sheet for August 12, 2019, including new employment contracts conditioned upon passing the background check and district mandated drug screening as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. School gifts. Mm. Sure. All right, for school gifts this evening, there we go. We've got two to present. The Elkhorn Lions Club has donated iPads to the Special Education Department, value of $1,000. And the Tibbetts Elementary PTA donated $280 to the music program from the proceeds of their recent fundraiser. I want to thank both the Lions Club and the Tibbetts PTA for their generous donation. Thank you for a motion to approve our generous gifts. So moved. And a second. I'll second. So moved and seconded to approve the gifts of the Elkhorn Lions Club and the Tibbetts Elementary PTA as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Announcements. All right. A, we have open houses are scheduled for August 26th. And this is something I probably should have thought of a long time ago, but I know that we have some school board members who have kids. Um, on that we night. Busy last week. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my question is, I mean, and, and it may not make it any better for some of you because the middle school does seventh and eighth grade on the twenty sixth. There is a length of time, so it depends on what grade your kids are in. But would the, the board be open to moving from the twenty sixth to the twenty seventh? I mean, I is that something you want? Or? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I'll be out of town on the on the twenty seventh. Okay. It affects me less this year than it did last year. Does it make I, I a difference? I have a child in elementary school, middle school, and high school. <laughs> I am out of Yeah, work. I've had that. Right. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it doesn't matter. Good. All right, then let's just leave it on the 26th, and my wife will figure it out. I told her we'll just go around. I'll use my superintendent. Uh, Privilege, and we'll go around at three o'clock or something. And okay, let me borrow the badge from yeah. three thirty yeah. until four. <laughs> <laughs> it's a high school. It's that picture. Yeah. Maybe I want to rethink my decision. I only have one and it's three of you, right? But how you got Tibbets too? Yeah. You have a Tibbets, yeah. But they started. I think it's five. I did a half hour at each. Get them really early for pictures. <laughs> I, I, I'm fine either way. Is that work better? Yeah, the time started at 7. That would be better. Yeah. 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 Would that be better? Any problem with that? Whatever works. I'm flexible. All right. Then let's do the board meeting on the 26th, but do it at 7 o'clock. Okay. Ansel looks so smart at me. And my mother-in-law decided to fly in on the 26th and be picked up at 6 o'clock. So I don't know how that would be. It's over. 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 What time is she coming in? 6 o'clock. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'm like, oh, Cheryl. Okay, by the time she gets her luggage. Right. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. Um, right. Nice walk. Yeah. Um, the, the student reps will be rejoining us at the next meeting. And just as a reminder, Rachel uh, Gottschalk and Kylie Degner are our student reps for the coming in. 
And then new teacher orientation starts this Wednesday at 8 o'clock a.m. And we do have the math teacher replace Jeff. He just wasn't hired early enough to get on the agenda. Yeah. So we are fully staffed teacher-wise. Okay. Awesome. Before and the new teacher orientation. New teacher orientation. Not on wood. Is that the one, is that yes. the one we do upstairs? Yes. Yeah. To that last year. So yeah, if, if you'd like to come, um, Matt will do a, a welcome. There's an introduction with all the teachers, and then you're welcome to stay for an inspirational um, <laughs> mission and vision. I knew some of the teachers because they had fun. That was interesting. Yes. But we we have a decent sized crew this year, and um, yeah, just ten. So. All right. How many total are we planning on? 20 on or in the end oh. right now? That's how about typical. Yeah. So how long would But like with student yeah. teachers and stuff, it's like 26 to Okay. It's just that they have to learn construction. Oh, okay. And then I do a little, just kind of a mission vision. Here's kind of laying out what you know, we look for in the teachers why they were hired, kind of that overarching expectation. And they have three full days. Uh, um, Sarah heads up that new orientation, new teacher orientation planning, and it's you know, all the directors, everybody has segments and pieces that they do. So it's three, three full days of a, a lot of work to try to onboard them. Mm -hmm. And then we have a wonderful mentor program that goes throughout the entire oh, year. So they'll be assigned a mentor. And, that's great. Um, yeah, it's a lot. When you think about everything that we've been working on for years, that's a lot to onboard when you come in from another district. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Very good. Looking for motion to adjourn this so, season. And a second. Second. Second to adjourn. Uh, uh, so, do we need the motion to adjourn to close? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we to return to close. Return to close session, I guess. Yeah, then we got to do a roll call. Yeah, roll call. Yeah, we do a roll call for now. So, roll call. so who did the motion? Me. Our, I second it. Second it. Second it. So, we're to Mrs. Ray. Mr. Scarrow. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Gayhart. Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll. Yes. Mr. Martell. Yes. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.